Okay guys, so I'm going to review real quick with you how to go about creating your notes for your research paper. Okay, um, this is exactly what I went over yesterday in class together. Uh, yesterday in class as a whole, which was Monday, but I know some of you maybe missed it for one reason or another, or you just need another um, refresher, so I'm going to go over it again. So what I need is you need to, by Friday, have slides one through eight completed, okay? Slide one, make sure that you put your topic on the front slide, okay? Two is just a review of um, how to pick out good resources, which we've already talked about. On slide three, this is where you put the links to your resources you're going to use. So the articles you're going to use, I want you to put your links here, all right? Now, next on slide four is where you need to decide your three focus areas. So we are doing a five paragraph essay. Your first paragraph will be your intro paragraph. Your last paragraph will be your concluding. The three in the middle will each have, there's a separate main idea essentially, okay? So... For example, if you're doing like Adolf Hitler, you might want to do um, maybe his childhood and then maybe his rise to power. Like how did he gain so much power and how did he get into politics? Um, and then maybe during the Holocaust. You can't really do after because he died, so that wouldn't work. Um, but every single topic is going to be a little bit different. All right. If you have trouble with this, let me know. Or if you want me to check yours, let me know. Um I, for my example here, I'm doing Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, and so I have um, my three focus areas are their startup and growing popularity, their health benefits, and then the amount of money spent on them and how much they've made, okay? Now, the, those are the easy ones. The more challenging is when you take the notes. So you here's make sure you're paying attention to the directions here. The big one I've highlighted in yellow. You must have eight to 10 pieces of information for each focus area. So with three focus areas, that means you could have about 30 pieces of information, okay? Basically facts or details. Um, sounds like a lot, but it's really not. It goes pretty quick. You need to take the information you find, put it in your own words, and then type that into the notes pages. You're not copying and pasting. You're not putting word for word what they have on their pages. You're kind of taking the details and just putting the details down so you can later wrap them in your own words and make them into your own sentences. Otherwise, the whole thing's coming back as plagiarized and I'm giving you a zero or you're going to have to redo it. And that's just way more work than doing it right the first time. If you find a direct quote that you want to use, it says something perfectly or is very number heavy, you can use a direct quote, just like we've been doing in the... Um, evidence tracker, you can copy it directly from the text and surround it with quotation marks. Okay, so maybe like you're doing Adolf Hitler and you want to use a quote, um, something he said specifically in a speech that you found in one of your um, articles about his rise to power, <clears throat> which would be very fitting. That's totally fine. Just make sure you put quotation marks around it. No more than two direct quotes per focus area. So don't go crazy on the quotes. You can find a couple of them, but don't, you know, keep it to two per focus area. All right, blue is another big one. This is, I'm gonna give it back to you and say, yeah, you need to go back and figure out where you got all this information from. Each piece of information must be followed by the citation. Now, the citation tells me where you got it. So right here, like the author's last name in parentheses, okay, it will most likely be the author's last name in parentheses or some of your articles you find online will not have an author. So then it will be the article title in parentheses and quotes. So here's an example. If your article title was Introduction to the Holocaust, we put quotes around it because it's an article title. And then we put parentheses around it because it's your citation. And that's going to be <clears throat> at the end of your um, detail or fact. And it's going to be at the end of every single one. Okay? Okay. Um, and then if you need more than one slide for a focus area, just create another one right below it. So if you run out of room on these three slides I created for you, the yellow, green, and pink, you can just create another one underneath it or just make your font smaller and squeeze them in. Either one's fine with me. So when we're doing this, 
this is what your information is going to look like. So my focus area one, I put my focus area one title here, startup and growing popularity. And now I have my notes with a citation. So I went to one of my articles. Okay. Um, let me try to find which article that was. Um, I believe it was this one right here. Yes. Um, and I read through the first couple paragraphs. Okay. And I learned that the person who created Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, who was named Harry Burnett Reese, he was born in 1879 in Pennsylvania. His exact birthday isn't really overly important. Um, I do like the 1879. That gives us an idea of how old he was and everything when he did this. And he was in Pennsylvania, which actually is important because that's where Hershey's is and that all ties in later on. Um, he married in 1900 and went on to have 16 children. Um, and then he was struggling to support them. So he took on all manners of jobs from butcher to a factory worker. All right. So when I take information from here, I read through it. I kind of pull the details out. And then as I can see here, the title of my article is The Fascinating Rise of Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. But it has an author. Okay. It's written by Emily Upton. So I'm going to put Upton in parentheses um, at the end of my piece of information. So I'm going to add an extra one here. I'm going to say um, married in 1900, had 16 children, um, and needed multiple jobs to support his family. Okay, and those all came from that article with Upton as the author. All right, now I'm gonna look at a different article real quick. I believe it's this one. Yes. Okay, so this one, um, I'm gonna add some more information uh, to one of mine. Um, they're from the late 1920s. Here we go, a lot of the same information. Okay, but then I get into this, a factory worker to support his family before landing a job as a dairy farmer for Milton Hershey. Okay, so he became a dairy farmer for Milton Hershey, by who, Hershey's Chocolate Company, so that's obviously a big deal. Um, so I'm going to include that information from this article. Now listen, some a lot of the information you're going to find in both, in multiple articles, just pick one to cite it from. You don't have to cite like all three articles if you find the same information. Okay. So I'm going to put dairy. He became um, a dairy farmer for Milton Hershey. I'm going to add that. Um, became a dairy. And I can't really reword that. So, um, but as long as I just put the fact down and I don't take their whole entire sentence, um, it's okay because then I'm going to put these into my own words, into my own sentences when I write my, uh, paragraphs. Now I need to put my citation. This came from a different article. So when I look at this article, this article does not have any, um, author listed on it. And you're going to look at the top and then you can also look down to the bottom, but there is not one on this one. Oops, it's freaking out a little. There we go. Um, so if there is not one, you cannot find it. What you're going to do is you're going to use the article title. So this one is the true origin story of Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. So I need to type that whole thing in. And once you've typed it once, you can copy paste it to your other one. So don't freak out about it. But yes, you do need to type it. So I'm going to do parenthesis, quote, the true origin story of, oops, let's go that one. Go back and make sure. Origin story of Reese's peanut butter cups. Okay, and then quote and then parenthesis. Okay, now notice when I am typing my notes here, I do not put periods, I do not make these complete sentences. You don't have to. Okay, these are just your notes. And then I would go on to my next one. All right. So I know that these came from the Upton article. These came from the true story, the true origin story of Reese's peanut butter cups. Every single fact that you type needs to have a citation at the end. Okay. You need to use all three sources, at least three. You can use more than three. 
I would say five is probably your max unless you get desperate and you need to find something else. That's fine. But when I'm all done typing here, I should have eight to 10 facts on this yellow slide about the startup and growing popularity. All right. Um, and then I'll move on to my second focus area and do my next one. And you can do this however you want. You can work through a whole article and sort the information on your slides, or you can just look through all three of your articles and fill this slide first and then go to the next one. It's totally up to you how you do that. All right. One quick thing. Um, for some of the, and hopefully my video doesn't start playing. Um, history.com always has these videos that pop up. Okay, this is a history.com website. History.com always has, um, and it's history.com, biography.com, sometimes Britannica. They won't have an author, but they'll list history.com editors as their author. So you're going to literally put history.com editors, that whole thing, not in all caps, okay? Just capitalize the H and the E here. Put history.com editors surrounded by parentheses, um, and that will be your author, okay? Now, as you're doing this, if you're not sure, email me and just um, link the article so I can look at it. I did have a chance last night to go through many of your um, slides and just kind of see how far you were. Um, some of you are doing fantastic and I tried to leave you some notes if I saw anything that you need to improve on. And those of you who are having a, maybe a little bit more of a difficult time with your topics, I kind of gave you some suggestions for topics. Um, if you want me to, I'll try to check them over again tonight. You are going to have all of class period on Tuesday now today to work on this. So you should really be able to knock out the majority of it. But if you need me to help you with your citations, um, email me the link. And then I can look at it and see, okay? I may not get it today, get to it today during the day, but I will get to it at some point. Or you can ask me in class. I will be online tomorrow with you guys, okay? So your job today is just going to be one, or your job this week, slides one through eight. By On Friday, I'm checking. I want to check for all the notes, and you're going to get points just for having everything done, okay? All right, email me with questions, guys.